Welcome to the Imagination Woodshop. I figured it was about time to do a shop tour. The Imagination Woodshop's been in business. Where I'm going on about a decade now, and in that time, I've never actually documented what the shop looks like or what kind of changes have been made to it. So I figured today is the day. Uh, the shop itself is a normal two-car garage, 20 by 20 by 9. Um, <clears throat> I can pull a car into it if I need to, but I really have dedicated the entire space just to woodworking. Um, I wanted to make this video today really be for two reasons. One, uh, I'd love to document what kind of changes I make. That way, if I come back in a year or two and do another video, I can see how things have grown. And then two, I watch a lot of these videos on YouTube, and it's fun to see all the little knickknacks and things that people build or how they have uh, arranged their tools to make their space more efficient or different storage solutions that they've done. So hopefully today, uh, as I take you on a walkthrough of my space, you can get some ideas that might help you as you either start your own workshop or maybe modify or update your workshop as well. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it. First thing I wanted to show you is the workbench. You know, this workbench actually predates the business. This was the first thing that I built when I moved into my house. I built it using reclaimed tuba six material from various construction sites because they would just throw it away. So instead of being trash, I figured why not put it to good use? And then um, added some three quarter inch ply and then just finished this off. This was beginning skills for me as a woodworker uh, 13 years ago. I didn't know a lot of the things that I certainly know today. So some of the things like the finish work that you would see on the, the doors themselves or the actual space to open the doors, that was done with a roto zip. So, you know, you'd use what type of tools you have at the time and then you go from there. Uh, one of the cool things that I actually just did was an air compressor air station on the back of the workbench. I got tired of having to haul my air compressor in and out from underneath the workbench. So now I've just got quick plug and play where I can plug in what I need and just hit the on button and I'm good to go. The cabinets did not get installed for probably a good five years after the workbench got built. Um, but the cabinets are really simple. I just bought them unfinished at Home Depot. And instead of permanently attaching them to the wall, I did a, a French cleat on the back. So basically that means I've got two 45 degree uh, mitered boards, one attached to the cabinet and then one attached to the wall. And I can just slide that cabinet right off on, on the wall. So if I wanna take those down, it takes me basically as much time as it takes us to get all the stuff out of the cabinet itself. Um, the cabinets have been a great addition. I tend to use it for storage for the business, for cardboard backers, sandpaper, or different various things that I might use, um, such as like finishing for um, uh, the gloves and the foam brushes, or uh, I, I tend to store some things in there as well as like cable ties. Stuff that I use a lot, but I don't necessarily use on a daily basis. Um, for my workbench itself, I thought it'd be handy to do a two level uh, workbench. One, I like the higher for more of the finish work, uh, but it's not as uh, thick. It doesn't come out as deep uh, because of the lip in the garage. And then the lower level is a little bit wider so I can actually set stuff on there and build as I go. One of the really cool things that I love is this Imagination Woodshop sign. Uh, I actually did some bartering with uh, a guy. His business is Woodworks. That's uh, W-O-O-D-W-E-R-X. He is a local Cypress uh, builder, does a lot with 3D printing, uh, CO2 laser work, and this with the CNC router. Um, bartered and traded some puzzles for that, and I just, I just love the addition to the shop. Uh, in addition to that, you can see I do enjoy the occasional uh, cold beverage now and then. I, I live here in Houston, Texas, and so I have to represent Texas with uh, my two favorite breweries, 
St. Arnold's Brewery, a local Houston brewery, and then Shiner, um, probably the most well-known Texas brewery in the entire state. I just love the look of it. You know, when I was five, um, <clears throat> I would go over to my neighbor's house up the road and he had a beer can collection. And being a typical boy, I just thought that was always really cool. So I told myself one day I would, I would do that as well. The, uh, the collection's getting pretty big at this point. I don't know how much more room I have because obviously uh, I need the space for tool storage as well. But as of right now, it's, it's pretty sweet. Um, moving over to this area of the workbench, this is a second add-on. I built this uh, probably a couple years after the original workbench. I decided I needed more space. And uh, the fun part about this is if I want to, I can actually fold uh, this bench up into the wall. It's on a giant piano hinge. The legs are on hinges too. And all I have on the wall is just a little gate hinge. And so everything can fold up if I take the scroll saw and the, uh, uh, the jointer off. I can just pop it up and that gives me additional room in case I need to bring something into the garage. So the main money maker for me is my scroll saw. It's the first major um, fine tool that I ever bought. It's a DeWalt 20 inch 788. I love it so much, I actually have two of them. The other one stays at my dad's house, um, but they work really great. Um, I've broken down maybe twice on me, that's why I have two of them. But for my main business, I do scroll work. And so it's really important for me to always have a working scroll saw. And just these DeWalt's are just the most beautiful, wonderful scroll saw that I've ever used. And I can't recommend them enough. So I do need to point out the poster. Yes, there's a poster of a scantily clad woman in my garage. But the backstory on this is my dad's name is Frank Miller. So you can guess who bought that for me as a gift. Uh, he thought that was pretty cool to have his name up on this giant poster of Jessica Alba. So I keep telling him one day that it's going to come down. It's getting towards the, the twilight of its life. It's been up there for a while. Um, moving over to the left, you can see I've got a, a panel in the garage. So in Texas, see I'm from the north. And in the north, a lot of your panels are in the garage. Easy peasy. But in Texas, for some reason, they think they need to put the panel on the exterior of the house on the complete opposite side of the garage. I personally think it's about the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But having said that, I have a 150 amp breaker that feeds into my house. It's just simply not enough power. So what I did is I hired an electrician. I am not an electrician, I wouldn't do it myself. I hired an electrician to come in and run a separate 50 amp panel off the main breaker. By doing that, they could run the additional 110 outlets that I needed and run the 220 so I could actually run machines that were more than one or one and a quarter horsepower, which I'll show you when we come to my saw stop. Um, before we move over farther, I wanna show you the bandsaw. Uh, the bandsaw and my DeWalt planer, I found these two bad boys on Craigslist. Um, if I can, I always get my stuff on Craigslist. The joiner was from Craigslist too. But I found a guy who was moving to a retirement community and they had a community center workshop, which kind of sounds pretty cool. But so he was selling his really nice, gently loved tools for cheap and I couldn't, I couldn't stop it at buying both of them and adding them to the shop. The bandsaw doesn't tend to get used as much as it should, but I've got some ideas in the future for better placement for that where I think I can get a little better use out of it. So moving over, you gotta check out my soft stop. This is the heart and soul of my uh, my shop. If the uh, scroll saw is the money maker, the saw stop is really what brought me to the next level. It's a three horsepower professional uh, six inch fence and rails. Uh, I love it, love it so much. It obviously was an investment, but I also consider it an investment because hey, I've got all ten fingers still. And to me, that's pretty important. And even one little issue with the table saw, that's going to be worth every single penny. So the saw stop itself is great. It, I think it works fantastic. The fence weighs, oh gosh, it weighs like, it feels like it weighs 50 pounds. 
Two of the things that I did once I got my table saw uh, set up was build a cross cut sled. Uh, if you have a table saw or a decent table saw, I always recommend building a cross cut sled. It just makes cuts so much safer and easier. It's been super, super handy. And then I also built an additional outfeed table. The thing I like about the outfeed table is I use the melanin top so things slide really well, but I can also, it's just held on with two uh, bolts and nuts. So all I have to do is unscrew those nuts and I can actually just take it off real quick. And then the legs, just like the legs at the bench, fold up for easy storage. So the outfeed table has been a really, really nice addition, especially if I'm running long stock or if I'm running plywood through the, through the table saw. You notice the garage door thing is pretty shiny. Um, if you're from Houston, you know it's hot. You cannot debate that. And if you are in Houston in August, you don't want to be in a garage. So to combat that, what I decided to do is I added insulated. Uh, I bought one of those insulation kits, garage insulation kits, and installed that on the garage door itself. It's been up for over a year now. I had to buy two kits because each kit comes for a single door. So as a double door, I had to buy two kits. But it adds about an R8 uh, insulation value. And I really have noticed a, different, uh, a, a difference in temperature. It's a lot more tempered in here and makes it feel a lot better. In addition to that, what really helped is I opened up uh, the space in the attic and I actually blew in a good foot of insulation, which is a good R36, R40, whatever that is, over the entire workshop. And then I actually add, I added vinyl stripping to the entire outside of the garage door, so that way it is completely sealed. The other additional benefit is not only does it help keep the air out and keep, or keep the hot air out and keep the cold air in, it also helps keep the bugs out too. So having done all that, what I did as well is I drilled a hole in the garage door itself and added a dryer vent because I have a portable AC unit. Um, and then I just hooked the portable AC unit right up there. It vents directly out the garage door. And in a hot summer day where it's 95 to 100 outside, it usually is 79 to 80 in the garage. So a 15 to sometimes 17 or 18 uh, degree difference, it makes the difference between not wanting to work and making life bearable. I also want to talk about the, the vertical lumber storage. I know there's a lot of debate on how you should store wood. For me, it came down to space. I simply can't afford to have eight feet of vertical space and uh, eight feet of horizontal space in the garage for lumber. So what I did instead is I did vertical storage. I have not had any issues with the, uh, the lumber bowing or anything like that. And a lot of what I do is puzzles and those are really small pieces anyway. So I tend to be cutting up a lot of the poplar, um, the regular stock that I use besides poplar, things like walnut or the cherry, I put those back towards the wall so they're a little more vertical. So if they're going to be there longer, then they're not as affected by it. But the vertical storage for me, it's really just a space saving solution more than anything. <clears throat> Next to vertical storage, I've got one of my latest projects. I did a cross cut sled uh, pull out station. Uh, I said cross cut sled. I meant to say chop saw. My chop saw. Um, chop saws are great, but they're big and they're bulky and they're kind of tough to store. So I had this um, shelving unit that I got from a neighbor who just wanted to throw it away. It was on the curb because the wood had rotted out. It took me all of 30 minutes to replace all the wood. I got it anchored securely against the wall and then I got some uh, over pole drawer slides. Uh, these babies are pretty heavy duty. They, uh, they're the 200 pound rated drawer slides. And so now the chop saw just slides in and out. It's super easy. It's super convenient. For the extra long uh, lumber, I do have to put some stuff up on the sides, but so far it's worked out really, really well. Uh, beneath that is just some additional storage 
for the really small pieces of, of wood for just miscellaneous projects. Next to that, I've got my secondary workbench. This workbench was a gift from my pops. Um, he's my partner in crime. He actually would be here filming right now uh, normally, but uh, things, things kind of changed up, so it's just me today. But uh, he bought this really, really nice, my mom as well. Thanks, mom. Love you. Um, they bought me this really nice workbench, and uh, what I did is I put it on casters because you'll notice <clears throat> I love to have a big open space in the middle. I use the middle of my garage as the main assembly area for large projects. And by having this workbench on casters, I can just haul it out and I can put it up against the wall as needed. I also, this is where I installed a nice little power strip and I, in, I put in the, uh, the drill uh, station there so that way the drills just I decided I've seen those really cool things where you can put them in front ways there's a clip on the drill I figured how easy is it just to buy a hook and put it on that way but then it's easy storage for the batteries everything's out of the way and I've got some additional lighting there with LED lighting I wanted to point out the Diablo uh, table saw blade and you'll notice the saw stop cartridge next to it well, I was kind of a dummy and decided to run through treated lumber. I can tell you, don't run through treated lumber on your saw stop unless you use the bypass feature. If you don't know, treated lumber has got lots of chemicals in it. It's pretty wet and the saw stop works off elect electric conductivity. That baby fired as I was running it through and it sounded like a gunshot. Thankfully, again, as I said before, hey, hey, I've got all my fingers but um, I may have had to, to change my underwear. But I keep that up there just as a reminder that the saw stop has been a really, really good purchase. I don't suggest showing that off to your friends though because those cartridges do run about 80 bucks. They're a pain in the neck. I also did it to a Dado cartridge uh, once and those are even more expensive. So not too much fun to experiment with, but it is nice to save the fingers. I wanted to show this drill press and stand that I built. This is another thing that uh, probably three or four years after I built the workbench, a guy on Craigslist was getting rid of his uh, benchtop drill press. Uh, it was a good price. I jumped on it and decided to get it. Um, it's going under a little refurbish right now. I'm replacing the chuck. There's a little too much wobble for me. And so I'm trying to get that mounted up and so that it'll be ready to go. To make sure I had it at the right height, I actually used some scrap lumber and I built out a little uh, shelving area for it. And underneath it, what I really like is I've got another drawer slides, love my drawer slides, and I just have all of the bits ready and right there and it's easy to get to, it's easy to hook up real quick, and then I'm ready to rock and roll. Next to the drill press, it's probably one of the most, one of my most favorite things that I've ever built in the workshop. <clears throat> so when I moved in, this was just an open, empty space. Uh, I had put some shelving in it. It was kind of janky, to be honest with you. Yes, janky is a word that I'm using in this video. Um, but it was kind of janky. I didn't like it very much. So I a working magazine for vertical storage. And so what I did is it's three separate pull-out cabinets. The one on the far right, it's single use is for clamp storage. And if you're a woodworker, you know you can never have enough clamps. But in this case, it was able to store a lot of the clamps that I use on a daily basis. So far, it's been really good. And it just slides right out on casters. And at the top, again, Love the drawer slides. All it takes is one single drawer slide to put that in there because there's actually no stress on the slide itself. It's really just used for a gliding system. And then at the top, I kind of overbuilt it, but it works out as a, a pretty good shelf as well. That's most of the big things in my shop. One of uh, a couple things that I haven't shown you so far is the floor. 
You can see I've got the foam flooring over the entire shop. This is another thing where I had a neighbor getting ready to, to move and he had those multicolored foam things that you get at a kid's playground and he was just going to throw them away because everything was faded. So all I did, flipped them over and now I've got an entire floor worth of foam that it has worked out really well because I have dropped tools and I have dropped projects more times than I can count. And so that's been really handy. I think it's saved, honestly, more projects than, than I care to think about. And then finally up top, I got some storage. Uh, and I've got two storage areas. In one storage area, it is for my long stock as well as trim pieces. But what is nice about this is I made uh, basically big, I don't know if you'd call them shelving, but they're on hinges. And I have the connector with chain so I can store things like my dowels, uh, veneers, or various tools that I don't use very often, but I just want to keep out of the way. And the garage door just opens up right underneath it. The other storage area is really for the business itself. Uh, any stock that I make with puzzles and the tables that I use. I have just some folding tables that get stored up there. I'll pull those down for assembly, but that's worked out really well. And it's a nice little space where I added in the LED lighting, which has really helped brighten up that area. The two other things, one, I just, uh, a couple months ago, my newest toy is my jet air filtration system. I love this bad boy so much. Um, my lungs rejoiced when I got it. It recycles the air in the garage in a space this size about 20 times an hour. So um, on low and medium, it's pretty darn quiet. Uh, I can run it while I'm listening to music and playing with the machines. And uh, so far I have zero complaints. And then the last thing, Again, storage solution. I have nine foot tall ceilings. I needed a place to put bikes. Bikes are huge. They take up a lot of space. And I needed a way to be able to access them quickly, but to also get them out of the way when I needed it. So to me, the ceiling was the obvious choice. The problem was they were too low and I would hit my head. So what I did is I literally cut two holes in the ceiling so it was open to the attic took some spare chipboard, popped them on over the actual uh, joists that ran across, and then that helped me raise up my ceiling an additional 12 inches. So that spot in there is just over 10 foot. So by doing that, I was able to get the bike stored up and out of the way, which is really nice. Last thing, you can see the lights that I use. Uh, it's a combination of fluorescent, which is not my first choice, but when you use fluorescent tubes that are this long, it's hard to get that in LED. Um, I have LED lighting and a couple old CFLs, um, which I keep using just because they haven't burnt out yet. And that was the best I could find at the time. So that's pretty much the shop. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe you saw a couple things that you may want to try and do in your own shop. I think it'll be fun. I've got some big ideas of what I want to do moving forward, some big changes. Uh, that I'd like to make, um, placement of tools, but again, I, that's really for another time. So if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I truly, truly, truly appreciate it. I appreciate you. Uh, if you want to hit the like and subscribe down below, uh, I'm trying to make more videos by the day. I'm kind of a noob. I admit it, but again, I just, I really appreciate you. I uh, really appreciate your like, really appreciate your subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the future. Thanks for coming along.